I've been diving deep into multiple courses on writing and extracting some of the best bits of information to figure out how I could put them together into a framework that I could use with AI. I've started with brainstorming and brainstorming has been really fun. It's a really great place to, to dig in. There are multiple tips out there from experts on how to brainstorm a novel. And I'm going to share some of them and how I have converted these techniques into actionable prompts and frameworks that you can use uh, today with your writing. So let's get into it. All right, there are a couple of different brainstorming techniques and you're going to be using these regardless of whether you already know your idea or not. Let's just start with the two most basic that I use. I have this one. Give me a number of high concept pitches for a best-selling genre story with a unique twist, intriguing characters, and gripping emotional stakes. This is kind of where I start if I really have no idea what I want the story to be about. So I would say give me 20 high concept pitches for a best-selling, and then you'd want to insert your specific genre here. Let's just say steampunk story with a unique twist, and then it will give you a bunch of different options and with a brief description about each. Now, the thing you want to make sure you do is get, ask it for a large number of these pitches because otherwise it's going to go into much more detail and you might realize, you know, that idea isn't really good. And so you you want it to give you a lot of different ideas with only a brief explanation. Otherwise, it's not going to tickle your creativity that much. This can work. It can give you some really good ideas, but it can be a bit general. The other prompt that is similar, this one was a plot plot based prompt. The other one is similar. It's give me a number of ideas for characters that are part of a best selling genre story that are well fleshed out, have strengths and weaknesses and undergo conflict throughout the course of the story. Briefly describe their character arc. So if we were to use this one and say, give me 20 ideas for characters that are part of a best selling steam punk story. And then from that, we're able to generate 20 more character ideas from this particular, in this particular genre. Now you might find as you were going through all of these different options that it gives you that a lot of them aren't that good. There might be very general, but usually one in 10 or so can be okay. And even if you don't use that particular idea, sometimes it will just spark your imagination and will lead you down a particular path. And so you might not end up using the ideas as it gives it to you, but that's the beauty of using AI is that sometimes it can just get you most of the way there. And then you take it the remaining 50% of the way. All right, those are the basic prompts. Those are the ones that I start out with. And if you've been watching my videos up to this point, you're familiar, you will have seen things like this in my other videos. We're gonna get into some of the nitty gritty ones, the ones that are a little more unique and can give you much more unique results if you know how to utilize them properly. A lot of these I've extracted from various best-selling authors and their recommendations. A couple of them in particular came from a my subscription to Wondrium, where I was watching James Scott Bell's course on writing best-selling fiction, which is a fantastic course for learning about writing best-selling fiction. It's one of my favorites that I've ever actually ever taken, and it's a relatively inexpensive option to be able to get all of that information. So I'll link to Wondrium down below if you're interested in that. Not all of these ideas I'm about to give you came from that, but a good chunk of them did. All right, let's move on to what if you already know the story concept that you want to write. In this case, we want to take that story concept and really get a whole bunch of other ideas that can surround it so that you can take bits and pieces of those ideas, combine them together with your initial story idea and turn it into something a lot richer. So the prompt that I like to use here is I'd like to write a, let's just say, I'm going to say urban fantasy novel about a woman who fights mythological creatures for hire. Please help me expand on this idea by providing potential details about interesting protagonists, antagonists, side characters, settings, plot twists, and subplots. Make a list of 100 possibilities. I've intentionally added a specific number here that is really, really large because I do not want it to dwell on any of these ideas. I just want it to give me a giant list of ideas. And because 
I'm not going to be using most of these. I'm going to be scanning through them and, and letting them spark my own imagination. Because remember, we're here about brainstorming. We are not actually looking for specific ideas that the AI can use. We're looking for sparks of inspiration. So if we give it this, it will now go through and make a brief list of 100 different ideas that I can now use in my story or not. And since I already put in my information here where about the concept that I already had, it is already using those things in the brainstorming to give me a quick idea of what I could do with that idea in these particular settings. What kind of protagonist, antagonist, side character settings, plot twists, subplots that it, I could use. For instance, a subplot is a love story with a human who turns out to be a guardian angel. All right, you know. The protagonist has to clear their name for a series of crimes committed by a creature. A rivalry with another hunter that turns into a begrudging friendship. You know, these are all decent subplots. I think I could take any one of these and turn it into something decent by the end of the story. And it's just going to continue on for a while, giving me all 100 of these ideas. And from this, you're going to be able to extract little bits and pieces that all serve to kind of come together for the big tapestry, the big puzzle that is your story. Because just having a concept idea is really just the first step. You've got to take a whole bunch of elements and start sticking them together in new and interesting ways to actually get a decent story. The next thing we're gonna do is play the what if game. Now this is one of the ones I got from James Scott Bell's course. Uh, a lot of the best ideas come from playing a what if game. Uh, a lot of the best concepts come from the what if scenario. So this is the prompt I use for this. I'd like you to create a list of what in what if statements related to your ordinary thing to be used in a genre story. Please give me a blank number of possibilities. So your ordinary thing, a good what if story is usually related to something ordinary, something that is part of your current world or part of the world in which your characters inhabit. It's something that's not really in itself that exciting, but you add a what if to it and it suddenly can become exciting. So let's just say this is going to be about a janitor to be used in a steampunk story. Please give me, and then I'm going to once I'm going to ask it for a large number again, 50 possibilities. And now it's given me a whole bunch of different options for what if janitor blank in a steampunk setting. So we had a couple of fun ones here, like what if the janitor's mop is actually a disguised steam-powered weapon? What if the janitor was once a brilliant inventor whose inventions are hidden around the building? A couple of these things can be interesting and really, again, spark that uh, curiosity, spark that creativity to actually get something usable and workable in your story. This is especially true if you are using this on side characters or little small things here and there to actually add a little bit of flavor to what might otherwise be a bland background element. But that's not the only way you can brainstorm with ChatGPT, another one that I like is to brainstorm first lines. Sometimes a lot of authors will actually come up with a really good first line and they'll say that's a good first line and then they will create the book from that. I personally don't work that way, but I know people that do. The prompt you're going to want to use here is give me a number or give me a list of, we'll say 20 potential first lines for a steampunk novel. The line should include at least one character, include some kind of conflict, and should be quick, engaging, and action-oriented to hook the reader. So this is the exact kind of thing that we want it to do. Let's see what it gives us. And now it's given us a couple of opening lines, and some of these aren't actually that bad. We have, Captain Alara dodged a whirling gear only to find her airship plummeting toward the city of Brass. With a burst of steam, Professor Montgomery lunged at the thief, clutching his life's invention. At As the clock clockworks... As the cogworts of the clock tower struck midnight, Lily cut the wire, praying it was the right one. You know, some of these, I would I would continue reading if I read this. Violet leveled her steam-powered pistol at the Duke, whose secret she just unveiled. That one might be a little bit on the nose, but again, you don't have to use any of these wholesale. Some of them can just give you an idea, and then suddenly you're off to the races. The next technique is to use news stories. Now, I particularly like this one because it's a really good way of injecting a little bit of realism to your story, uh, especially if you are a fantasy writer like me. 
And using this a new story and adapting it to a much different situation can actually give you something that seems really unique, but it's actually based in something factual. So the way you could do this is a prompt like this. Using the following new story, brainstorm, and then we could say, just give it a number, like 20 ideas for a... In this case, I'm going to continue with our steampunk trend and using the following news story. Now, there are a couple of different ways um, you can include your news story here. If you are using Claude, you could just paste the whole thing in. You could do that with ChatGPT as well. But another option, if you are using ChatGPT Plus, is you could go to Plugins and make sure you have WebPilot enabled. And with that, you can actually grab a news headline, stick it in here, and it should be able to read the news story and then give you uh, the 20 brainstormed ideas. So for instance, I just took this recent story about how AI tools like ChatGPT are likely to complement jobs, not destroy them. And we can just take this story here, plug it in, and it should be able to use the plugin to analyze the story and then give me 20 ideas for a steampunk book based on that particular news story. So it gave me an error as it was going here, but it did a pretty decent job. It gave me a summary of the news article first, but then it went and brainstormed 20 steampunk book ideas. A couple of interesting ones in here. Uh, a story about the first ever steam-powered AI. A group of rebels fight against the increasing automation of their steampunk world. A story set in a developing nation that discovers ancient steampunk technology, a tale of steam-powered administrative assistants who gain self-awareness. All kinds of different things that are inspired by this news story. Now, alternatively, another great way to do this is not to use a real-world news story, but to actually brainstorm in-universe stories, news stories, that you could then brainstorm a whole book around. So a good chat for this, if we go to a new chat here, is to come up with, we'll just say... 10 in this case news article teasers covering unusual events crimes disasters and discoveries that could drive the plot of a and we'll go ahead and say steampunk story and then see what that gives us and it's given us headlines and brief snippets of information about different news items that you might find in this world a mysterious airship crash reveals clockwork contraband now it's really leaning hard into the whole steampunk thing I'm going a, a little bit too hard if you ask me but it's doing an okay job an airship crashes in the heart of london revealing a cargo full of illegal clockwork devices authorities are baffled by the advanced technology and are on the hunt for the enigmatic inventor etc etc and there are a bunch of good ones in here train to nowhere passengers lost in a time space rift a steam train vanishes into thin air while passing through a tunnel only to reappear weeks later with no passengers on board the incident is being investigated as a possible rift in time in space so you get the idea, right? This can be another good way to and to brainstorm a story or to brainstorm a subplot or any other part of the story, maybe something that's going on behind the scenes and to really flesh out that world. Next, we're going to be looking at job titles. Now, job titles are actually often, you look at Stephen King novels, for example, a lot of the people in Stephen King novels have very interesting professions. And you'll see this in a lot of contemporary works as well. And I think people often like to see people doing their job and especially if it's a i'm not going to say unusual but just less commonly known job that and especially if you can research it and really get the details right so here's the prompt i use for that give me a list of interesting and unusual professions that one might find in a insert your setting or genre here i'm just going to say steampunk you could also get more specific and say like in the country in a steampunk environment or something like that, or in the lower levels of a steampunk city, whatever. And it now gives us a whole bunch of things that we could use as, as inspiration here. A lot of these are very related to steampunk. So if we wanted to do this one again, give me a list of interesting and unusual professions that one might find in a 1920s setting in the United Kingdom, for example. Um, this could give us a lot of different types of professions silent film pianist vaudeville performer jazz musician that's in arts newspaper hawker and so you can get a whole bunch of different ideas here and then you can go down the rabbit hole with ChatGPT, learn more about those roles do your own research and a lot of stuff that can be done there so let's say we like one of these let's say we like vivisectionist and so we can now take this and i'll just paste it here and use a different prompt 
uh, and say, please brainstorm a list of plot, character, setting, and theme ideas for a steampunk book where the protagonist is a vivisectionist. And then I have information about the vivisectionist there that I already took. And then see what that gives us. And then now it will take the occupation that we gave it and brainstorm a whole bunch of different ideas surrounding that. So we have a couple of here. The Forbidden Experiment. The protagonist discovers an ancient manuscript detailing a forbidden experiment that could revolutionize medicine, but at a great ethical cost. That sounds very interesting when you are a vivisectionist. The Beast of the City. Strange mechanical animals are terrorizing the city, and the protagonist must dissect them to understand their or, um, origin. We have character ideas. So we have the vivisectionist, a morally ambiguous character driven by scientific curiosity. We have a bunch of other people that could be related to that. We have setting ideas. Victorian Metropolis, a sprawling city. That's not particularly new. The slums, a poverty-stricken area with the protagonist finds the subjects for their experiments. That would seem to be appropriate. Theme ideas, ethics versus progress, the nature of life, cost of ambition, humanity and monstrosity, the role of science. All really good, appropriate themes for a steampunk story about a vivisectionist. So you get the idea, very interesting way to go about brainstorming your ideas. The next prompt that I have here is actually one of my own making. I just kind of came up with it and played around with it and found it a lot of fun. This is maybe a little bit more ridiculous than you might otherwise use, but let's just say, give me 30 ridiculous would you rather scenario questions related to a and we're going to say a steampunk book about, and then you can put your concept here. I'm just going to leave that off and just say related to a steampunk, steampunk book. But if you have more concept ideas, you can put them in there. And then it that should be able to take that into the context and give you ideas that are a little bit more geared towards your specific story idea. So we have a couple of them. And I specifically included the word ridiculous because sometimes... When you don't do that, it just gives you really basic and generic ideas. But here we go. Would you rather be a sky pirate with a rusty airship or a ground scavenger with a steam-powered mech? Would you rather have a pet mechanical dragon or a pet clockwork owl? So this is a good one of one that might spark my imag imagination. I'm like, oh, what about like a middle grade steampunk book about a pet mechanical dragon? You know, would you rather be a genius inventor who's socially awkward or charismatic con artist with no technical skills? Would you rather live in a floating city with strict rules or a lawless underground settlement? And, you know, again, some of these are generic. That's why I put ridiculous in there because it was even more so before I did that. But this can be a really fun one to play around with for your own story. All right. Now we get to the mashup. This one is another one of my favorites. The prompt goes like this. Brainstorm a number and we're going to say 20 book ideas using a plausible mashup of and then you give it a couple of things you can give it two things three things any number of things so let's just say the steampunk genre the plot of star wars and the character of similar to orson wells i just pulled that out of the air because i couldn't think of anything else at the moment with an antagonist of similar to the shark from Jaws. And sometimes you can ask it to give you a bunch of different elements that are seemingly random. And when you put them together, it can actually create get really creative when you give it this restraint of all of these seemingly unrelated ideas. It can actually start to give you some really interesting things. So let's see what it gives us for this mashup. So this first one did a really good job of actually taking all of those things and mashing it up into a steampunk story. We have in the steampunk galaxy, a young inventor akin to Luke Skywalker teams up with a charismatic radio host, Orson Welles-like, to defeat a mechanical shark terrorizing the skies. You can now go in and dig deeper into that and say, how would they actually do this? Why would you need a charismatic radio host? All of these questions. And asking why will actually give you better story ideas than just saying, eh, that couldn't really happen. That makes no sense. We have another one, The Clockwork Rebellion. A group of rebels led by a Wellsian character must stop an empire from unleashing a steam-powered shark that can devour entire airships. A rogue captain and his Wells-like first mate hunt down a legendary sky shark that threatens the balance of power in this galaxy controlled by a steampunk empire. So you can see how just mashing ideas together can give you really different results that you might not have thought were possible, and it can really get your creative juices flowing. All right. We've done a lot here. So how, how do we sum this all up? Well, in the course, there is a 
prompt uh, there is a format that he uses for a succinct story idea because you ultimately want to be able to boil down your story idea into something that works as a like an elevator pitch something that you can get off in one or two lines and so i've taken his format and put it into a framework that works here for ai and the framework is i'd like you to create a short pitch for a story using all of the information below sum it up in a in using this framework I sum it up using this framework. My story is about blank who must blank in order to blank. Give me a list of, we'll just say five options because I don't necessarily want to stick to the first one that it gives me. And then you give it all of your story info below. Let's just say we want to go with this Aether Wars idea here. I would ideally have more information to give it, but we can just, just to give you an example of what this looks like, I'll give it to you with this one. My story is about a young inventor similar to Luke Skywalker who must team up with a charismatic charismatic radio host in order to defeat a mechanical shark that's terrorizing the skies. My story is about a daring young inventor who must join forces with a famous radio personality to build a weapon capable of destroying a sky-dwelling mechanical shark and save their steampunk galaxy. That is your succinct story idea. And if you can't boil down your own story to this type of format, then you might want to work with it a bit until you can. Thankfully, AI makes this really easy. I hope that was really useful for you. I will see you in the next video.